Welcome everyone, welcome to this Valentine's Day special that I have for you guys, running tarot readings for only the signs requested, okay? So if you don't see your sign here, it's because it wasn't requested. How do you request? Well, you know, you gotta be my subscriber. You gotta hit the bell for notifications so that you're notified and I let people know when I'm doing these things so that they can comment on my community page and let me know, all right? so. Um, yeah, hit the bell and subscribe if you want to get readings for your sign in the future. And for those of you interested in a private reading, because reminder, it's not a private reading. So take what applies, discard what doesn't. And if you want a private reading, well, wait to the very end and I will give you the details for that. Enjoy. Virgo, welcome to your valentine's day reading i hope you are having a good valentine's day hope this finds you well we're going to start off with a quick five card spread we're going to go deep we're going to go deep we're going to start about you know your person of interest and how they're feeling versus you're feeling i mean a whole bunch of stuff so let's see what the messages are for you virgo with your love life love and romantic life for virgo and this will apply to you regardless of your relationship status, okay? And the foundation, three of chalices. I love it. I mean, this is a great energy having to do with being happy in love, really, um, you know, joining with somebody in love. Some of you, there might be a reunion. I'm going to say that. Maybe somebody from the past, you're coming back together with them. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. For others of you, um, it's just about you joining your, your cup of love, your emotion, you know, bringing it together with somebody. Main issue here, though, is three of wands in reverse. Not a fan because, you know, that's telling me that there's, there's some kind of difficulty with getting expansion in your life. And there's just been some kind of delays or obstacles or maybe you, you, didn't, you didn't really think ahead on this. Um, it could also be that you uh, you have been really um, maybe per, if this is about a reunion from somebody with somebody from the past, um, perhaps you have been nostalgic about somebody, you know, the good old days, and wanting to kind of rekindle that, um, having a desire, um, if not for somebody from your past, just wanting to kind of rekindle that feeling that you felt before from your past, maybe lost love. Um, some kind of emotional coming together with somebody that you're you, it's either a specific person or it's a specific feeling that you've lost and you're wanting to rekindle it but the main issue here is there's not been any forward movement with it it seems in the past to a pinnacle some of you have been working on your money um but others of you this is simply an issue of not really knowing how to proceed in the situation um if it is a specific person from your past it's like you don't know how to approach them or they don't know how to approach you there might be some kind of uncertainty or embarrassment maybe about possibly being rejected or afraid of getting involved with this person um them getting involved with you in the future. I do think that you're maybe going to get a brand new start in love with the full card. Um, it, it is some kind of new, new chance that you're taking. Okay. Something very spontaneous might have to do with an Aries, the foundation. You've got nine of chalices in reverse. Well, I need to caution you about that. Okay. That is the classic narcissist card. And I'm not saying that you or the other person is a narc, but uh, just beware because I see that there's some kind of emotional disconnect with this card. I'm seeing that uh, maybe somebody's been a little bit too self-focused, too self-centered. And I got to say, in the future placement, with that being an Aries there, it is about me, 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 me. And that's what's holding this all thing together. Like, yeah, maybe you do want to emotionally connect with someone. And you do feel like, I'd really like to reignite that fire that was lost in me. But, oh, wait a minute. I don't know how to move this forward. I really don't want to get too involved in that. So I'm going to go my own way. Or I'm going to go have a fling with somebody. Um, because really here at the foundation, somebody doesn't want to totally. It's like they're holding back on bringing that cup out. Okay. There's some kind of emotional disconnect and self-centeredness. All right. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. 
Um, the outcome and the overarching energy is the wheel of fortune in reverse. So, you know, if it was in the upright, I'd say, yeah, maybe that X is coming back. Maybe you are going to have another go around, but with it in the reverse, um, I don't know, maybe they're not available and that's why you're not approaching or, you know, they're not approaching you because you're not, a, maybe, you know, they know that you are emotionally disconnected from this. I'm seeing maybe sexually, uh, there's some fond memories or feelings or whatever, um, some desires there that maybe you would want to rekindle, but on an emotional level, somebody here is disconnected. And so I feel like some of you have really shut the book on this chapter in your life. You or they, this is closure. This is, I'm not going to keep going round and round with this person. Um, or again, it might be, I can't go back around with this person because they went and married somebody else, or I'm now married to somebody else. Um, or who knows, you know, it could be something like, you know, this is, you know, an out and left field thought, but it occurred to me, maybe they're locked up in jail, you know, like there's no way you're going to get this, like there's something out of your control here with this outcome where it's like, you know, as much as you or they desire, it, you know, the, the two of you coming together and rekindling that, that passion or whatever, um, somebody's not going to reconnect on an emotional level. Um, it's just like not an option for some reason. It's just not going to happen. And so I can see probably um, you will be getting uh, maybe a new start with somebody else. What's the time frame on this in the future with that full card? Um, Aries season obviously coming up to me. Um, late, late, um, right, let me say mid, mid March to mid April. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not really getting a time frame on any, either of these cards other than, you know, Aries season, which is mid March to mid April. Um, but I am going to say, it looks like what you're going after is you want a settled commitment. You want something solid. And if that's not you, you know, um, I guess I need to read. Okay. <laughs> Because uh, I see the new beginning is like, you know, uh, the only other interpretation I can see for this is maybe you're going to try to get into um, new housing, um, you know, maybe a contract for new housing or new property. Okay. Uh, but I think most of you, um, you're going to get a clean, you're going to do a clean slate and you're going to go after a settled, committed partnership. Yes, possibly marriage. And I see, I see that time, you know, that highlighted time during um, mid-March mid-April. Why is there difficulty? Um, let me just see what the main energies are for this. Girl with a snake. Uh-oh. Empath and narcissist. Paradigm being charmed or used. Enabler. Boundaries. Did I not say narc? Somebody here wants to use it's it's a usury relationship okay and i think that maybe you know it you know <laughs> i just saw one of these there it is no nah, yeah that's oh 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 okay clock need time takes time in time cycles time to heal progress yeah there's the cycles i think you're done going round and round with this person um, you're working on healing, healing from heartbreak, freedom from toxic relationship or addiction. Very interesting. The sword and rose, clarity, truth, revelation, solidarity, force, honor, protection, power. I think you know the truth about this. I think, you know, maybe, maybe there was some passion there, some good sex there. Um, but I, I think somebody's, you know, taken their heart and checked out of the building and it's going to go build with somebody else. Wow. Very, very interesting. Um, I am inclined to do a new love, you know, like who is this new love? But I don't want to pigeonhole spirit. So what I want to do is see, you know, let's see who gets brought up here, whether this is the old person or the new person. 
some of you right now are not really focused on the new person, okay? You're focused on you and your healing. And so, again, I just want to see what comes up. We'll kind of go as spirit leads. Although I do intend to make this, you know, a love reading about you and another person of interest, your person of interest. Let's see what they're thinking. Well, that flipped. <clears throat> King of Wands in reverse. This person's got a lot of ego. A lot of me, me, me energy. Um, very impulsive energy. Um, doesn't listen to their intuition. Doesn't uh, listen to spirit. Doesn't listen to what other people have to say. Uh, they're emotionally disconnected with that two of cups in reverse. I think that maybe they're trying to heal something or it's like they put a cup of love out there or what looks to be love, but emotionally there's a disconnect. It's time for them to take a time out and do some self-evaluation and review things because I think with the four of cups in reverse, there's been a lot of dissatisfaction, deep dissatisfaction with this person. They might have made a decision or somebody here made a decision that was deeply dissatisfying to them. And it might have to do with what they're manifesting, maybe in their dating life. Um, they they need to get some enlightenment on this, but as far as I can tell, they're stuck like Chuck. They're attached to some kind of fantasy that's keeping them and their partners in relationship mode or in fantasy land mode, okay? Stuck, stuck, all right? Energy is what I'm getting here. This person needs to heal. And maybe, you know, you put out a cup of love for them to do that. Um, or at least when you met them, it looked like they were really being loving and putting out this, you know, um, cup of love for you. You thought this was new love. And they might have thought it was. But there's something disconnected with them on an emotional level that they need to take a time out, reevaluate why they keep making decisions in their relationships that leave them and others feeling, you know, deeply, deeply dissatisfied because it's, it's unfortunately some kind of, there's some kind of, um, they want to manifest something in their life, but they're not able, like, this is an irony here. Honestly, think about it. Ace of Cups next to the Two of Cups in reverse. It's like, I'm, oh, here's love, but I'm not really giving you love. I'm giving you the appearance of love, but in my heart of hearts, I'm not really connected to you. Why? Because if there's narcissism going on, which I saw twice, with that girl with a snake card and that nine of cups in reverse. If this person is a narc, they come in, maybe love bomb you with that ace of cups. But, you know, it looks like a light's on, but nobody's home. And it's time to have a wake-up call about that. That the appearances of love or the feeling of love is not necessarily synonymous with actual love. I think that this is a pattern for this person. They have a very rigid way of seeing themselves and relationships and other people and emotional connection, and that's keeping them and others stuck. And again, this might be a very charming, resourceful person, very skilled person in terms of manifesting, like when they go out and date, they know how to bring that love bombing in, that cup of love. But at the end of the day, it always ends up with emotional disconnect and deep dissatisfaction, deep disappointment, where there's some kind of opportunity missed to manifest more, manifest an emotional, genuine, sincere emotional connection, manifest getting of the same mindset, coming into powerful agreement. And I think that there might be one of the ways that the, the emotional disconnect may present itself with this person is coming across as very aloof. It's causing them to miss opportunities. It's causing them to stay stuck. There's a failure to get enlightenment. Because frankly, I think they're hanging on to some kind of fantasy. And the fantasy probably has to do with, um, you know, if I love bomb you, then that's love, right? Wrong. No, you got to go deeper, honey. Go deeper. But wait a minute. That would require more inner security, which uh, an art does not have. 
<clears throat> by the way, you know, I don't always talk about it, but man, when I see these NAR cards come up in these readings, I'm going to let you know, for those of you who don't know, I have written a book on healing from narcissistic abuse. And so if you want to um, check it out, you know, I've got a lot of content on this channel on healing from narcissism. And yes, I've got a book available too. So we'll see what you are thinking. What are you thinking about this? This person? What are you thinking about this person? Okay. Well, it seems like you have some kind of romantic feelings about them, or you did at some point. Um, you might, again, saw them as a charmer, saw them as charismatic, um, saw them as somebody who was maybe idealizing a situation, um, could be a very ambitious person. Maybe you had wishes. You were hoping that this would, you know, culminate into something more, you know, beyond the, you know, six months of um, the honeymoon stage of the relationship. I can see maybe water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces might be relevant here or possibly an Aquarian. But uh, I, I think also maybe you were hoping that they were a soulmate. But with the seven of chalices not seeing things clearly okay i think you had a lot of lofty ideals maybe with this person and getting progress and moving things forward with this relationship might be a sagittarius or a cancer there's there's that fire sign aries again okay um i think that you um you again you have some high hopes about love but maybe you're not clear within yourself as to how to manifest that in your life. You know, looking at what is viable and what's not, right? Because some of these people, they come in promising the moon and stars. And I feel like this person definitely did this. They came in with a cup, um, but they weren't like, they maybe presented or projected this appearance. Like they were emotionally tuned into you and connected. But in reality, um, I'm hearing something about the prize, the prize. They were after the prize, okay? It was a hunt, the chase, or whatever. And then once maybe they got you or they get whoever they're, they're after, you know, then that's when the disconnect and the seeming aloof and disinterested start setting in. Um, there's really a need for you, I think, to get real about your options, okay? Because I'm seeing up here a lot of really high ideals and i never want to talk you out of that virgo okay believe me i've got the same like oh i've got the same damn thing all right but the reality is that we're living in an imperfect world you know this right this is your thing that virgos have to deal with <laughs> you know the most perfect sign, the sign that strives for perfectionism more than any other, must deal with the, the reality, must cope with the reality that we are living in an imperfect world. Yes, have fun with it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put this out here. Like, you you know, th this looks so airy-fairy. And, you know, don't lose sight of that. Don't lower your standards. Please don't. The problem is we got people with so many low standards living in mediocrity, all right? But at the same time, I think this needs to get tempered with a realization of what we're dealing with, okay? The reality of how do you bring heaven down to earth? How do you do it? It's not easy, not an easy task, okay? Because we're dealing with a lot of these people, this kind of nonsense. People who are either outright narcs or they, they demonstrate a lot of narcissistic behaviors, okay? So... I think you're going to make progress um, on this past issue, this issue from your past, that yes, I'm seeing nostalgic, you know, energy, which I saw from the beginning, like uh, this, yes, possibly a reunion, a coming back together with somebody, or at least you thinking about it or wanting it. it's on your mind. I mean, honestly, as I go further in all the cards, I think it's something in your mind, but I don't think you're going to go back to it. I think you're getting off on a new start. There it is. Same deck, different, I mean, same card, different decks. And I, I think, honestly, you're going to protect your emotions. You're not going to let this, I, I'm seeing that with the Queen of Chalices. I don't think you're going to let this person um, 
you know, take advantage of you emotionally again. I, I think that you are going to have really good mastery of your emotions like a queen of chalices would. Um, I think that you, your brand new start is, you know, kind of back to this. I'm going back to finding a settled relationship and partnership. And if not that, I'm going to feel my own sense of belonging. I'm going to have my own emotional security. I'm going to get a clean slate, brand new start on that. How do they feel? What do they feel towards Virgo? What do they feel towards Virgo? Trusting, reliant, dependent, believing, proud. I think that you're a prize to them. I think I said that before. Um, and I think that you're, you know, obviously Virgo's, you know, a, a very solid, steady, generally speaking, um, earth sign. My gosh, they, they really look up to you. But they are afraid or anxious about something and feeling trapped and resentful about, ooh, ooh, what the heck is all of that? My gosh, this is some nastiness. So here, here's this, the, you know, a contrast here. On one hand, they, they're like, oh, look at what I have. And they find you to be a trustworthy person. But on the other hand, there's some kind of anxiety and, and feeling blocked in um, and imprisoned. Interesting, I mentioned earlier, somebody here might be in prison and that's why you can't go back to them. Obviously, it's not going to apply to everybody, but this is the second time it's coming up. Somebody might literally be in prison or jail, all right? Um, for others of you, this is more um, metaphorical where they feel that there are limits to this relationship and they, I, I think they're pretty resentful about it and they're not happy about the limits that are being put on them in, in that relationship. How do you feel? How does Virgo feel about them? confident. I don't know why I'm here. Well, I can handle that. I've got this. I can handle it. Uh, what? <laughs> it's like a contradiction. Now confused, disoriented, bewildering. I, I don't know. This is like this person throws you off your A game or something. Like you've got this confidence, but is there something disorienting about their presence? And that's why you're like, no, I, I'm good without you. I'm going to, I'm going to do this on my own. Um, vulnerable, curious. There's something very stressing between the two of you in this relationship. And I, I'm, I'm almost getting like, uh, there's some kind of pressure going on or there has been pressure where it's like, it, I'm hearing it's reaching a boiling point. Tick tock, tick tock. Where was that clock? Yes, there it is. Um, I, 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 if you are in this relationship right now, it's got an expiration date on it. Okay. Um, something, something is, is about to reach a boiling point, a bo boiling point. What is the romantic advice? <clears throat> well, okay. So there's some kind of chemistry here and I did see that. Ooh, release your ex. Somebody still involved in another relationship. And again, that's why I'm getting this. Okay. And I got, that might be a three-party situation. I'm going back again. Where did I see it? Three of Wands in reverse. To a pentacle, I am seeing some indications here. There might be some infidelity. Obviously, not for all of you. It's not like glaringly obvious in my face. There's some subtleties here. Yes, somebody might still be married. Okay, somebody might have ties uh, to an ex through property, through a marriage contract, through a house, a mortgage, a lease agreement. And this is reaching a boiling point because whatever these ties are, are caging the other person in. And they're starting to get resentful about it. Or I'm also seeing if everything's like, I'm cool with this arrangement. Well, uh, this person, if they find out, will not be. Right? It'll be like that. And that might be a fear here that is stressing out the relationship that somebody is going to find out. 
codependency. Oh, good times, good times. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I always say in my book, um, wherever there is a narcissist, you will find a codependent, an empath. So, yeah, um, here's the narc. Here's the narc again. Here's the codependent. Sweet Jesus. Y'all need to check out my book. Y'all need to check out my playlist. Okay. I'm going to put this out there for wherever the codependent is. What is the self-loving advice for the codependent here? What is the self-loving advice for the codependent? Sensitivity, own your power, remember your spark. Sometimes we get, as codependents and paths, we get so enmeshed in other people's energy, it becomes our own. And the, you know, the love that we feel for this person, we think is all about them, but it's really about our own ability to be able to love the unlovable. My God, give yourself credit for that. Do you see, you know, your own beauty, your own spark within yourself, your own fire, right? This card says you are here for a purpose. Remember it or define it for yourself. Like what is your point in being in this relationship? Um, and what is your power in this relationship? Okay. Changing the world is easier after one has learned to change oneself, become the change you wish to see and watch the world around you shift. Power issues are often you know, really, um, you know, major themes in codependent narcissistic relationships. A lot of times the codependent feels that they don't have their own power. And a lot of times, in all fairness, the narc has stripped them of power. The narc is exploiting them of power. But, you know, again, if you are a supply source for a narc, you're empowering their behavior. How are you empowering a narcissist in your life or somebody who's basically, you know, getting their own needs, wants, desires met at your expense? How are you making that possible? And what would happen if you actually directed all of that empowerment to yourself? This card is about sensitivity. Appreciating beauty requires sensitivity. This leads some of us to feel vulnerable and to deny our emotional needs, yet the world needs more sensitivity, not less of it. So, you know, on this note, I want to say again to the whoever's the empath here or the codependent, you know, a lot of times where we go wrong is we hyper attune to the needs of others rather than attuning to our own emotional needs. And I think this card is calling you to attune to your own needs in this relationship. I do feel, given the outcome, okay, that eventually you will, okay? Especially if this is you and you're the empath codependent, you're going to do it eventually, all right? You're going to come around to this, all right? But what is a shadow energy here in this relationship? What is a shadow energy in this relationship? Again, you know, for the cross watchers, might be flipped, all right? If you're saying, no, the Virgo is the narc, might be. It's a general reading, okay? Disillusioned, disillusioned. And I saw it over there. Honestly, both of you kind of have it. We go back to that hangman in reverse. And, you know, this person, you know, often kind of fantasy land, airy fairy, you know, out in the stratosphere <clears throat> with their ideals that are just not grounded in reality. Um, you know, having a hard time accepting the imperfection of this world of people and all of that. Um, this person over here is attached to a fantasy that or a rigid way of thinking that the appearance of love is the same as love. It's it's really not. They are confusing it. Like they need to go deeper. There's a, there's a deepening of love that needs to be realized by this person. But they're emotionally disconnected. Um, there's some kind of, okay, stagnant energy. Think something's not progressing. And I saw that before uh, with these, you know, three of wands in reverse. There's delays or obstacles or setbacks. Um, and it might have to do with communications. I don't know why my eyes are being drawn to the chains over that, that person's face. Now I'm getting a mask. Okay. Like, I don't know why I'm being brought. This is so wild. Okay. I don't normally talk about this in my tarot readings ever, but this COVID mask came up in my head. Like, I don't know what that has to do with. I'm seeing that COVID mask may or may not be something. Just take it for whatever applies. 
but I'm seeing masks with both of these, okay? And it's almost like um, you're not getting vulnerability out of this person. You're not getting authenticity out of this person. And that might have a lot to do with why you're not seeing something clear about this person. There's been some kind of airy-fairy fantasy land going on. It's really not grounded. I don't even know that there's any substance to it. I think you're slowly figuring it out. Is there anything more? No, I don't think there's anything more. Excuses. <clears throat> Somebody's maybe making excuses uh, for, you know, um, why, uh, why they're not leaving a marriage or they're not leaving um, a some kind of a commitment or a contract. Why they won't let go of the ex. Why they're letting things reach a boiling point. Um, what is this person thinking about Virgo? What is this person thinking about Virgo? What is this? Oh, got a lot. I can still feel you. I know you're right, but I need to come to my own conclusions. I'm sorry I couldn't do right by you. How could you still love me after all I've done? Virgo, what are you thinking about them? Being apart has been life-changing for me. Anything else? I've never forgotten you, even though you think I have. Yeah, there's some kind of disconnect here with somebody. I think you've got feelings for this person, but I think you're gonna move on without them, okay? <clears throat> Might be a water sign. You're going to a water sign, maybe. Or somebody, a woman who seems very loving. Or a person who seems very loving. Um, no other compares to you. Seeing you reminds me of the things I know deep down and that's not always easy to deal with. I can't seem to find the right words to say to you. Is that why we've got this? Because all this, somebody, somebody has excuses here. And again, might be why you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to keep going around this thing with this person because nothing I say is right. Um, you know you need to maybe do something. You need to heal from this situation, but you don't. It's not easy. You've been in my dreams. It's between both of you. So both of you, you know, again, I, I'm getting the dreams. is not necessarily a nighttime thing, right, while you're sleeping, but more of a... <clears throat> Idealization. Okay, there's a lot of um, idealization going on and, and both parties needing to get really grounded and and seeing the truth. All right, back to this. Um, get a revelation. Get some clarity about the truth of this, um, this relationship. What do they want? What do they want? Progress. Queen of Swords, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, regardless of sign, because I'm seeing a lot of signs here, um, Cancer, Scorp Cancer, uh, Sagittarius again, this is like, right, I saw it over there, uh, the chariot, both people want progress and movement, okay, this can be literal movement, like moving house, or um, taking a trip, traveling, but I think this is more on a on a you know a very logical, clear-headed. I want things to progress. I want things to move forward. I know in my mind. I know the truth of the matter of what I want. Okay, but there's somebody who's having trouble manifesting. And again, I'm getting a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, cycles with this person, <clears throat> wanting attention. Um, wanting to get the victory. A um, lot of quick moving, fast moving energy. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. But it looks like this fire, the, there's, there may be two women here, okay? An air sign and a fire sign. 
and there's a misunderstanding going on between the two of them or an inability to manifest positive change. Um, there's cycles going on of who's getting attention. And I'm, again, is this a third party situation for somebody? If you are saying no, if you are saying no, then let me try to read this in a different way. It's almost like they want progress. They're very clear in their head that they want progress. Um, they're very ambitious, yet they're having trouble manifesting positive change. They want this positive change to manifest in a way where they very quickly get the attention that they want. And you know what? That sounds so, you know, fire sign, female, like, I want the attention. I want attention now, now. Um, and they're very clear about it, but they're not getting it, okay? And what they want is they want some progress on this front of getting the attention that they feel they deserve and they need, okay? Um, what do they need? 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 All right. I'm having trouble. Okay, finally, card came out. <clears throat> well, they need to avoid a fallout is what they need to do. With the tower in reverse. Something here is not built on solid ground. Oh, sweet Jesus. Look at that. <clears throat> Yeah, what they need to do is avoid a fallout, and they need to, um, <laughs> that's the Virgo card, but regardless of sign, this is about, you need to find some alone time, okay? You need to get some enlightenment, seek the truth, the higher truth, on what you need to do to avoid a fallout, because I think this is a very stuck situation. And I think that this, you know, with the Two of Swords in reverse, definitely you know you're you're at a stalemate um back to this stuck like chuck energy that i saw with the um you know the hangman in reverse okay um somebody's not clear all right they're indecisive or they know what their options are but they don't like their choices so they're just not going to choose or they don't want what's on the table and um, I think the problem is that um, they need to really um, spend some time alone, okay? It, it's odd. I had a similar message for Leo about their person of interest and needing to um, maybe, you know, spend alone time. But we got a lot of people in this culture who can't stand being alone. They cannot. They hate it. Like, they're already dealing. There's a loneliness epidemics, you know? There's a loneliness epidemic and, and, and people just dread the thought of it being alone, but really this is what they need. They need some time in solitude to kind of seek God about, you know, what, what do they need to do with their life? Okay. Because really what I'm seeing here is that they need to look at avoiding a fallout and that perhaps pursuing a particular course of action um, is just there's no way they're going to avoid the fallout. It's inevitable. Something here is not built on solid ground. There's no integrity to this. And they need to really spend time with God figuring this out within themselves that the reason why um, they're not getting the choices or the options that they want is because this ain't it. You're barking at the wrong tree. You want attention or you want to keep going through these cycles in and out, trying to get attention, ooh, look at me, you know, this type of stuff. Um, but it's really, um, you, you, you're just barking up the wrong tree. I, I don't know how else to say it, okay? What do you want? Let's see what you want. Let's see what Virgo wants. Please show me clearly what Virgo wants. <clears throat> All right. It's almost like you're resisting working on something from your past. You don't want to work on this anymore. It might have to do with somebody <clears throat> that you've known from your younger years, like your childhood. It's almost like you want to put your back. You want to put your back to the past. You're resisting the past. Yeah, you you know, that just fell out of my lap. Um, yeah, you, you don't really see that, that this is going to pay off for you. 
And that's another reason why you're like, I, you know, I want to put my back to the stuff from the past. I'm resisting it. Nothing going on here. Yeah, we had some good times, but I, I'm seeing that somebody again is just like, why do I want to put the work in that? Because it's not going to be rewarded. Um, no good's going to come from it. Might have to do with a very feminine energy. We got the Empress there. Um, might be a Taurus or an Aries, regardless of sign. This is like a mother figure, a wife, you know. Um, and coming together, reuniting. There's that reuniting card. Reunited and it feels so good. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Y'all don't want it. She might want it. Or whoever that person is might want it. Okay? But I don't think, somebody here is not going to do it. Somebody here is like, nope nope ain't going there all right fine what does virgo need what does virgo need <clears throat> might be whoever this is all right okay i i was seeing two women over there for that other person might be the other woman whoever is the wife right now okay um you got a page of swords and a seven of swords uh you need to think about getting a new strategy <laughs> All right, maybe you need to think about dipping out of there, okay? That's what you need to do, okay? You need to, you need to really consider. You know, also, you need to be aware of people who might be looking, uh, spying on things, right, to see if you're sneaking around, because this is a liar, cheater, thief card, and this is the spying. This is the cyber stalking card, okay? So, um, if you are sneaking around, you better watch out. Because I can see that somebody might be snooping and trying to figure out, okay? With the Ace of Chalices, let's see. Wow, this is so much, so much. Well, you need to do a lot of stuff, Virgo. That's all I got to say here. This needs to get healed. I'm going to say that. If there has been any lying, cheating, thieving going on, Get clean of that, please. Like, no condemnation. Uh, we're all human, right? Uh, but the advice here, what you need to do is you need to heal this issue of sneaking around, doing things on the DL, because and you need to at least think about it, okay? Because I am seeing that somebody might be snooping around and watching. I think this is like a need for really deep, heavy, emotional healing, you taking a time out is kind of similar. This person needs to, you know, get in some solitude here. Similarly, you need to do some healing work through prayer and meditation about, you know, your emotional connections with people, your relationships, the emotional integrity of these relationships, the people that, you know, you most need in your life. Uh, to work with you and to cooperate with you. And yes, maybe these are people who you support and support you on the day-to-day -day on a very tangible level. But has there been some kind of holding back on an emotional level? You concealing things because of fears, insecurities, doubts, again, confusion. And there's regret around this. Like, are you keeping people out emotionally? Are you putting up emotional blocks within yourself that are regretful? Like, you're not letting people in because there's some kind of healing work that you need to do. Deep, deep emotional healing work, spiritual healing work, having to do with some strategy or approach that you've been taking in life. Well, I mean, I just went off the deep end on that one, didn't I? Yeah, I sure did. Well, I mean, I am going to uh, leave you off with some advice on how to get more love in your life. Because honestly, I think that's where it's at. I think, you know, planet Earth is a school for us, you know, spirits having a human experience to learn how to love and be loved. That's the highest calling in this life. You know, God's currency is love. That's the gold standard. But we are living in a very love-phobic, love-adverse reality. This is not an easy task. And I can definitely see there's um, a lot of work here, emotional healing that needs to be done for you. Virgo, let's see what the cards are advising to get more love in your life. <clears throat> Forgiveness. Love endures. 
and have faith. So at the foundation, have faith is saying, trust your faith in this situation. Forgiveness is about nothing being gained from holding on to past disappointments. And love endures is about love not giving up or losing faith. Love being hopeful and withstanding every situation. I really feel like, um, yes, there has probably been some kind of betrayal here on an emotional level. Um, you know, everybody's got their karma. Everybody's got their, you know, inner demons that they're wrestling with. Um, they've got their soul wounds that they've, they've got to figure out how to heal in this lifetime. And um, I think that, you know, that's at least how I deal with, you know, the imperfection of this reality is that everybody's, everybody's dealing with those things. And if you really take that to heart, maybe it's easier to forgive um, the other person or for them to forgive you and to move on and have faith that you're going to have a clean new start. I really saw that there with the full card showing up for you twice, that you will have a new beginning. But no matter what happens, I think that, um, you know, the, the message here is you've got to, um, Right, not lose faith in love and the endurance of it, and that that's really all we have. I hope I've said something to you that has blessed you. And until next time, wishing you all the best. Be blessed. Okay, thanks for watching to the end. I want to talk to you guys about private readings. Nothing is as accurate as a private reading, right? Nothing. And that's for me because, you know, not only am I pulling cards just for you and only you, but I'm looking at your unique astrology when I do these readings. So as many of you know, I do more than just love readings, but I'm going to speak to the love readings right here. Uh, for those of you who want to know what kind of love readings you can get from me, I'm going to tell you. But if you want to know more about the other readings I have, go to crownedones.weebly.com and you'll see everything that I offer there. Now, briefly, you know, I think the easiest, quickest reading you could get from me is probably like a 12-month love forecast. This is really good for people who are single or you know, they're trying to make some important decisions with their love life over the next 12 months. And they want to know, you know, what is the energy supporting? What are the challenges? How do they make the most of it over the next 12 months? Really helpful for that. Um, if you're in a relationship, I do sinistry readings between you and that other person where I look at the strengths and weaknesses of the relationship. I give advice. I pull cards again based on the astrology and tarot. And I've also got a this or that uh, reading or a should I stay or should I go reading uh, where I've kind of got, you know, these two options that play with the cards where let's say you're choosing between maybe two dating options and I'm looking at the synastry between you and these two people. Again, what are the strengths and weaknesses of either person? Who should you go with? Or on the should I stay or should I go? Um, this is if you're in a relationship and you're trying to make the tough decision, you know, what's going to happen if I stay versus what's going to happen if I go. And um, finally, I do offer a reading, which I think is the most important reading you can get, but it is pretty comprehensive. Frankly, I think it's the reading everybody should get first, but it's like two hours long. And for that reason, it's my most expensive reading, which I do offer payment plans for, but um, it's the ideal life partner reading. I personally feel like don't go on a date without it. <laughs> you've got to know, you've got to know, you know, um, your love nature, your sexual nature. Um, what are your needs? Like who's going to check those boxes? Who's not? I'm going to look at your Juno placement. Who is your ideal life partner? I'm going to look at what's going on in your seventh house, your eighth house, your fifth house. And things like that are going to help you understand yourself better so that when you get in and out of relationships, you understand what works for you and why. Very important reading. Um, but again, everybody's at a different, you know, budget. And so, you know, I even offer a really a custom reading. If you want to come in and just, uh, you have a budget, you have a time frame that you need to work within, um, we can definitely do that. And you can just come in with your own questions and I can answer that. 
but obviously I can't do, you know, 20 questions in 20 minutes, right? Because um, for those of you who know me well, know I can go very deep on one question alone, particularly if I've got your astrology, we can go way deep. So if you want to get a private reading with me, like I said, go to crownones.weebly.com. Would love to work with you. Till next time, be blessed.